Home Improvement, TV series. Home Improvement is an American television sitcom starring Tim Allen that aired on ABC from September 17, 1991 to May 25, 1999, with a total of 204 half-hour episodes spanning over eight seasons. The series was created by Matt Williams, Carmen Finestra, and David McFadzie and Dot in the 1990s. It was one of the most watched sitcoms in the United States, winning many awards. The series launched Tim Allen's acting career and was the start of the television career of Pamela Anderson, who was part of the recurring cast for the first two seasons. Based on the stand-up comedy of Tim Allen, Home Improvement made its debut on ABC on September 17, 1991, and was one of the highest-rated sitcoms for almost the entire decade. It went to number one in the ratings during the 1993-1994 season, the same year Allen had the number one book, Don't Stand Too Close to a Naked Man and a movie, The Santa Claus. Beginning in Season 2, Home Improvement began each episode with a cold open, which features the show's logo during the teaser dot from Season 4 until the end of the series in 1999, an anthropomorphic version of the logo was used in different types of animation. Home Improvement had been in the works between Tim Allen and the writing-slash-producing team of Carmen Finestra, David McFazian, and Matt Williams since the summer of 1990. Originally. The project's proposed title was Hammer Time, both a play on the catchphrase made popular by artist M.C. Hammer and the name of the fictional fix-it show within the series, which was also called Hammer Time. By the time ABC committed to the project in early 1991, Allen and his team had already changed the title to Home Improvement. The show hosted by Tim Taylor in the shooting script for Home Improvement was still called Hammer Time when the first pilot with Francis Fisher was filmed in April 1991. The catalyst for the series' name change was to represent the aspect of fixing problems within the family and home life, as well as the use of mechanics and tools. Once the second phase of the pilot was produced, with all the actors that made the final cut into the series, including Patricia Richardson, Tim Taylor's Hammer Time became Tool Time. The first film pilot was produced in April 1991, with Frances Fisher playing Jill Taylor. Fisher primarily known as a dramatic actress, was well-qualified for the co-starring role but was viewed by the studio audience as not being comedic enough, and too serious in her line delivery. The producers tried to work with Fisher on adapting to the situation comedy setting, but shortly after the pilot wrapped post-production, they decided to recast her. Before the first pilot was shot, actor John Bedford Lloyd was in the running for one of two roles, that of Tim's tool-time assistant, originally named Glenn in the role of Wilson. Bedford Lloyd eventually got the part of Wilson, but his agent later made claims that the actor was unaware that most of his scenes would require his face to be partially hidden behind a fence. For this reason, the crew received news just one day prior to taping the first pilot that Bedford Lloyd had dropped out. Casting immediately contacted the other actor considered for the role, Earl Hinman. Stephen Tobolowski was tapped to play the Tool Time co-host, Glenn. However, he was still busy with a movie that was in the middle of production at the time the first pilot was to be shot. Therefore, the producers set out to cast an alternate character that would stand in as Tim's co-host for the pilot, or for however many episodes were required until Tobolowski was available. The casting department auditioned Richard Karn, for what would be his first major appearance on a TV sitcom, the character of Al Borland was created from there. After the first few episodes completed with Patricia Richardson as Jill, Tobolowski was still tied up with his other commitments, and Karn found himself in his role permanently when Tobolowski decided he would have no time to do a series. Thus, the character of Glenn never came into being. The series ended after eight seasons in 1999 due to a salary dispute between Allen and Richardson. Richardson was offered $25 million to do a ninth season, Allen was given double that. The two declined the offer and the series came to an end as a result. In the first two years of the show, Pamela Anderson played the part of Tim's tool girl, Lisa, on Tool Time, but left the show to focus on her role on the syndicated series Baywatch. Her last episode as a series regular was The Great Race, which aired on May 19, 1993. Tim's new assistant, Heidi, played by Debbie Dunning, replaced Anderson as the Tool Time girl for the following third season, starting with Maybe Baby, which aired on September 15, 1993. Anderson did reprise the role of Lisa on the sixth season finale episode The Kiss and the Kiss Off, which aired on May 20, 1997. In the show's eighth season and final season, 
The middle child Randy left for an environmental study program in Costa Rica in the episode Adios, which aired on September 29, 1998. This was done because Jonathan Taylor Thomas reportedly wanted to take time off to focus on academics. His last appearance on Home Improvement was the eighth and final season's Christmas episode Home for the Holidays, which aired on December 8, 1998. He did not return to the show for the series finale, aired in May 1999, only appearing in archived footage. He was shooting the film Speedway Junkie for release that summer. His character was not replaced. The series centers on the Taylor family which consists of Tim, Tim Allen, his wife Jill, Patricia Richardson, and their three children, the oldest child, Brad, Zachary Ty Bryan, the middle child, Randy, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, and youngest child, Mark, Taryn Noah Smith. The Taylors live in suburban Detroit, and have a neighbor named Wilson, Earl Hinman, who is often the go-to guy for solving the Taylors' problems. Tim is a stereotypical American male, who loves power tools, cars, and sports. In particular, he is an avid fan of local Detroit teams. In numerous instances, Tim wears Lions, Pistons, Red Wings, and Tigers clothing, and many plots revolve around the teams. He is a former salesman for the fictional Binford Tool Company, and is very much a cocky, overambitious, accident prone know it all. Witty but flippant, Tim jokes around a lot, even at inappropriate times, much to the dismay of his wife. However, Tim can sometimes be serious when necessary. Jill, Tim's wife, is loving and sophisticated, but not exempt from dumb moves herself. In later seasons, she returns to college to study psychology. Family life is boisterous for the Taylors with the two oldest children, Brad and Randy, tormenting the much younger Mark, all while continually testing and pestering each other. Such play happened especially throughout the first three seasons, and was revisited only occasionally until Jonathan Taylor Thomas left at the beginning of the eighth season. During the show's final season, Brad and Mark became much closer due to Randy's absence. Brad, popular and athletic, was often the moving factor, who engaged before thinking, a tendency which regularly landed him in trouble. Randy, a year younger, was the comedian of the pack, known for his quick thinking, wisecracks, and smart mouth. He had more common sense than Brad Butte was not immune to trouble. Mark was somewhat of a mama's boy, though later in the series, in the seventh season, he grew into a teenage outcast who dressed a Dean Black clothing. Meanwhile, Brad became interested in cars like his father and took up soccer. Randy joined the school drama club, and later the school newspaper. In the eighth season, he left for Costa Rica. In early seasons, Wilson was always seen standing on the other side of Tim's backyard fence as the two engaged in conversation, usually with Wilson offering such advice as Tim grappled with his problems. In later seasons, a running joke developed in which more and more creative means were used to prevent Wilson's face below the eyes from ever being seen by the audience. Also in later seasons, Wilson's full name was revealed to be Wilson W. Wilson Jr. Each episode includes Tim's own Binford-sponsored home improvement show, Call Tool Time, a show with an A Show. In hosting this show, Tim is joined by his friend and mild-mannered assistant Al Borland, Richard Karn, and a Tool Time girl first Lisa, Pamela Anderson and later Heidi, Debbie Dunning, whose main duty is to introduce the pair at the beginning of the show with the line Does everybody know what time it is? In reply, the audience yells, Tool Time. The Tool Time girl also assists Tim and Al during the show by bringing them tools. Although revealed to be an excellent salesman and TV personality, Tim is spectacularly accident-prone as a handyman, often causing massive disasters on and off the set, to the consternation of his co-workers and family. Many Tool Time viewers assume that the accidents on the show are done on purpose, to demonstrate the consequences of using tools improperly. Many of Tim's accidents are caused by his devices being used in an unorthodox or overpowered manner, designed to illustrate his mantra more power. This popular catchphrase would not be uttered after Home Improvement's seventh season, until Tim's last line in the series finale, which are the last two words ever spoken. Tool Time was conceived as a parody of the PBS Home Improvement show This Old House. Tim and Al are caricatures of the two principal cast members off This Old House host Bob Vila and master carpenter Norm Abram. Al Borland has a beard and always wears plaid shirts when taping an episode, reflecting Norm Abram's appearance on this old house. Bob Vila appeared as a guest star on several episodes of Home Improvement, while Tim Allen and Pamela Anderson both appeared on Bob Vila's show Home Again. The Tool Time theme music, 
an early 1960s-style saxophone-dominated instrumental rock tune, was sometimes used as the closing theme music for home improvement, especially when behind the credits were running the blooper scenes that took place during the taping of a Tool Time segment. The theme music for home improvement was composed by Dan Foliart. The theme song is unique for its sampling of power tools, most notably an electric drill and jackhammer, which is heard during the theme song. Tim's grunting was also sampled for the theme song. The flute and organ parts of the theme music were also used. From season 7 until the end of the series, a remixed version of the theme song was used. Home Improvement received numerous awards and nominations in its 8th season run. Notable awards and nominations include, Golden Globe Awards, Primetime Emmy Awards, Kids' Choice Awards, Young Artist Awards, Young Star Awards, ASCAP Award, and many others. WatchMojo.com ranked Home Improvement as the number 9 TV sitcom from the 1990s. The character with most honors was Wilson, who was ranked as the number 6 unseen character and as the number 3 TV neighbor. Binford made it to the number 10 fictional brand. The video game was ranked as the number 5 worst game based on a TV series. On Metacritic, the first season holds a score of 64 out of 100, based on 18 critics, and the second season holds a score of 75 out of 100 based on five critics, both indicating generally favorable reviews. Throughout the show, Tim Taylor would often be wearing sweatshirts or t-shirts from various Michigan-based colleges and universities. These were usually sent by the schools to the show for him to wear during an episode. Because Alan considered Michigan his home state, the rule was that only Michigan schools would get the free advertising. There were two notable exceptions to the general rule that Tim only supported Michigan educational institutions on the show. First, during the episode Workshop Till You Drop Tim Wears a Wofford College Sweatshirt. Second, during the episode The Wood, The Bat and the Hungry Tim Wears a Noans Community College Sweatshirt. Tim Allen, Richard Carn, Casey Sander, and Debbie Dunning had a reunion in a television special named Tim Allen Presents, A User's Guide to Home Improvement in 2003. A by then terminally ill Earl Hindman did voiceovers, befitting his never seen persona of Wilson. Hindman died shortly after the special aired. Alan presented his own favorite clips from the show, insider's tips, personal reflections and a question-and-answer session with the live audience. The special is included on the Season 8 DVD set. On August 3, 2011, in Pacific Palisades, California, the surviving main cast members reunited for Entertainment Weekly magazine, including Jonathan Taylor Thomas, whom the cast had not seen since 1998. Richard Karn guest starred in two episodes of Tim Allen's 2010's ABC sitcom Last Man Standing in 2013. Jonathan Taylor Thomas has also appeared on Last Man Standing, and has directed episodes of the series. In 2015, Patricia Richardson guest starred on Last Man Standing in the episode Helen Potts, playing the episode's titular character. Jonathan Taylor Thomas made a cameo in the episode, playing Richardson's son. On May 5, 2015, Hollywood Life reported that Tim Allen and Richard Karn had admitted talking about getting back together as a cast for a home improvement reboot or reunion show. Karn was quoted saying there is always a chance, absolutely. Would I be on board? Yeah I think so. I would love to see what the storylines could be, it could be very funny. During its 8th season run, the show always finished in the top 10 in the Nielsen ratings during a season, despite never making the number 1 slot. Its highest finish was a second-place spot in the show's third season. The series finale became the fifth-highest-rated series finale television program of the 1990s and the ninth overall series finale ever presented on a single network in television history, watched by 35.5% of the households sampled in America, and 21.6% of television viewers. In the United States, Home Improvement began airing in broadcast syndication in September 1995 distributed via Buena Vista Television, now Disney Apk Domestic Television, and continued to be syndicated until 2007, in a manner similar to Seinfeld and The Simpsons after they began airing in broadcast syndication, episodes of Home Improvement were not aired in order of their production code number or original air date. It has previously aired on cable television via TBS from 2002 to 2013, and WGN America from 2002 to 2007. It also aired on Nick at Night from September 3, 2007 to October 2009 and again on Monday mornings only starting on September 27, 2010. It aired on TV Land from January 4, 2010 to 2013. 
The show aired on the Hallmark Channel from September 3, 2013 until January 2016. The Hallmark Channel aired Home Improvement Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. ET until 6 p.m. ET. Adding to its continuing popularity on American cable networks, it was reported on March 7, 2018, that Laugh TV, an EW Scripps company subsidiary, signed a broadcast licensing agreement with Disney ABC Television Group in order to air the show. On May 2, 2018, it was reported that Up That also obtained broadcast rights from Disney ABC Television Group to air all eight seasons. Up bears back to back episodes Monday through Friday 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. ET. Episodes on UPTV also air Saturday afternoon status of June 5, 2018. Home Improvement airs on Laugh TV from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. ET. Outside America, reruns have aired on the Disney Channel, Channel 4 and ABC1 in the UK. Originally, Home Improvement was aired on Channel 4 and then later the Disney Channel. However, in 2005, it began broadcasting on ABC1. On September 26, 2007, ABC One ceased transmissions and no official announcement was made as to which channels would be broadcasting ABC One's previous programming. Although the show stopped airing in the UK due to ABC One ceasing transmission September 26, on July 28, 2008, it restarted from the pilot episode on Virgin One. However, it was announced that Virgin One, now Channel One, would close on January 31, 2011, and no announcement was made regarding its broadcast future in the UK. In Canada, it previously aired on CTV from the beginning to the ending, 1991 to 1999, as well as CMT and YTV. In Germany and Austria, Home Improvement has been shown in dubbing under the title Hörmal Verde Hammert, Listen Who's Hammering. It ran on ARD, 1993 to 1995, RTL, 1996 to 2006, RTL 2, 1999 to 2000, 2007 to 2012, Vox. 2004 to 2006, and Super RTL, 2008 to 2009. Currently, reruns in Germany air Mondays at 15:20 hours, 3:20 p.m. German time, on RTL Nitro. In Austria, reruns aired for a period of time on ATV. It was also shown on Mnet in South Africa. In New Zealand, reruns of the show currently air weekdays at 2 p.m. on the state-owned channel TVNC2. In 2011. Asia Network Star World started broadcasting the show in place of The Simpsons. Additionally, reruns have aired on the Seven Network and 111 Hits in Australia, Disney Channel in India, and Hits, TV Channel, in Southeast Asia, including Macau, Singapore, and Taiwan. On September 29, 2017, Home Improvement became available for streaming on Hulu along with fellow Disney ABC television properties Dinosaurs and Boy Meets World, in addition to fellow ABC programs Family Matters, Full House, Hangin' with Mr. Cooper, Perfect Strangers and Step by Step. Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment has released all eight seasons on DVD in Region 1, 2 and 4. Season 8 has the Backstage Pass, which immediately followed The Long and Winding Road, Part 3. On May 10, 2011, Walt Disney Studios released a complete series box set entitled Home Improvement, 20th Anniversary Complete Collection on DVD in Region 1. The 25-disc collection features all 204 episodes of the series as well as all special features contained on the previously released season sets. It is encased in special collectible packaging, a home improvement toolbox with a Binford all-in-one tool tape measure. The Region 1 DVDs are on three discs with the exception of the final season set, which has four discs, whereas the Region 2 DVDs are presented across four discs, but in Germany the fourth to seventh seasons are also three disc sets. The Region 2 packaging and program menus for Season 1 vary compared to Region 1 releases. The Season 3 menus in Region 1 are in widescreen, but in Region 2. The Region 1 releases of Seasons 2 and 3 consist of, deliberate, holes in the outer packaging. These do not exist in the Region 2 releases, in fact, the Season 3 outer packaging is physically printed where the hole would be in the Region 1 packaging. Seasons 5 and 6 accidentally contain some slightly edited episodes, most likely due to using syndication prints. And the episode The Feminine Mistake from Season 6, doesn't contain the 3D version of the episode as originally aired on ABC, instead using the 2D version as seen in syndication. It has been mentioned on review sites about the lack of episode commentaries and bonus features on the DVDs, except unaired blooper reels. 
In an interview on About.com, Tim Allen stated that it was a done deal that the DVDs would not contain interviews or episode commentaries. Whether this was before or after someone at Disney ordered the three commentaries available on the season 1 DVDs is unknown. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.